What can you know, we as, as pastors, as parents, as educators, what can we do to help uh, especially children and young Christians build a proper foundation for, for truth, not just for them to be able to share with their friends, but also for themselves, because they are going to be in this secular culture where they're going to be told that, you know, the, your truth, my truth, that it's all relative. What can we do to help build a foundation of, of solid biblical Christian worldview truth? Yeah, well, we have the same division in the Christian world to some degree. We just call it the sacred secular split. Right. But it has a lot of the same impact. In other words, we tend to think that Christianity applies to the sacred realm, to Sunday, to church, to Bible study, to our prayer meeting. But we often don't really know how to apply Christian truth to the rest of life, to what we do politically, to what we do at our jobs, to what we do with our leisure time. You know, we don't look a whole lot different from the rest of the world. So I think the... The first step is to really help people overcome the sacred secular split. And I have to tell you, um, th- th- that's the whole theme of my book, Total Truth. It's how to, un- you know, how to climb out of the sacred secular divide and, and really understand how Christianity applies to all of life. And uh, th- to tell you the truth, it's, uh, I'm kind of surprised to find that the, that message is more needed today than it was when I wrote the book. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'm teaching at a Christian college now, and it's very hard to, to um, help Christians realize that Christianity is not just for what you do in your prayer meeting in your dorm, you know, but that it actually applies to all of the subject areas that we study at the university. So that's the first step I, I would think is get out of the, when people talk about a Christian worldview, often that's what they mean. They mean get out of the sacred secular split and realize Christianity is meant to be a way of viewing the entire world. That's yeah. what world view means. Yeah, that's been, so the week that we're recording this, um, cause this will actually air in a, in a few weeks, there is a, a release of a shoe that is called the, the Satan shoe, which was a, a group of people that took a shoe from a shoe company. We'll leave them out of it because there's a, a pending lawsuit. It looks like mm-hmm. a cease and desist letter was issued this afternoon and they've taken it and had made it. Um, they put a pentagram on the tongue piece and uh, actually used a, a scripture way out of context in order to rationalize the shoe and there are things like that that are coming into the Christian purview, right, that are just part of the day-to-day things that our, our students and, and even that, that we as adults are seeing on Instagram, on Facebook, and all of all of the social media stuff, that the platforms that we see we're being fed this. And those are areas where the secular view is pushing itself into every little bit of what we do. If, they're, if it can be pushed onto our shoes— which now contain like one drop of blood from the manufacturer is what this actually has in it. The, the discussion with our kids has to be more than just on Sunday mornings. I, I think that's essentially what you're saying is even those kind of things have to be talked about. We need, we need Mike Lindell to come out with a shoe. <laughs> the my shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sorry about that. It might be good to um, get back to your original question, which was, uh, questions that I cover in my book, Love Thy Body, because right. that's really being pushed everywhere as well. In fact, um, the Equality Act is has already been passed by the U.S. Senate, uh, excuse me, by the U.S. House, and it's now uh, being considered by the Senate, um, in which case it's it's going to be pushed on us by law, and right. not just by cultural pressures. So how does this uh, two-story view of truth help us to understand the the issues uh, related to abortion, homosexuality, transgenderism, and so on. And I'll, let me start with the most obvious one. The most obvious one is transgenderism. Right. Because essentially what's happened is once you had the two-story view of truth, a div- you know, a divided concept of truth, that division is going to show up everywhere because your view of truth influences everything. And so it, it shows up in terms of a, um, a, dualism or divide or dichotomy within the human being itself so that transgender activists will say your biology is not part of your authentic self your biological sex has nothing to do with your gender identity that your gender identity is strictly a matter of feelings a matter of uh, you know in your inner sense of self so that would be a very sharp dichotomy between your body 
your biology, your anatomy, your physiology, you know, which is all said to not matter at all. Right. And oh, yeah, so that would be the lowest story, right? If you if you keep the metaphor of two stories in a building, that's what we know by science. We know your body and your physiology by science. But then in the upper story is your gender identity. And that's purely a matter of private feelings. No one can challenge it. It's completely disconnected from anything that's verifiable. Um, so it's it's the two-story divide applied to the human being, where what we know by science is the body, but you know your, your true self, your authentic self, is in the upper story, where it's completely postmodern, uh, disconnected from any physical reality. So that would be an example where this um, two-story divide, uh, it, of course, it goes much further than Schaefer realized because right. he didn't have, he didn't have issues like transgenderism to deal with. Um, but it turns out that it's extremely helpful in understanding what the secular world is saying on these issues like transgenderism. Yeah, that is that is the the crux of Love Thy Body. One of the things that I think is is interesting is the way that um, this one thing applies to so many different areas. You know, you mentioned uh, abortion, transgender, same sex attraction, uh, but also the idea of geriatric euthanasia. Which, if anybody has read uh, How Should We Then Live, um, it's one of the things that, Sh- that Schaefer talked about was both uh, abortion and geriatric euthanasia as uh, an issue that could happen if we continued in, uh, in this line of thought and in this way of thinking. Hello, I'm Nancy Piercy. I'm a scholar-in-residence and professor of apologetics at Houston Baptist University. And here's why you should never listen to the Reverend and Reprobate show ever. 